Okay, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the short answer questions to test E. So if we look at the directions, it says answer all eight questions in this part. A correct answer will receive two credits, clearly indicating all necessary steps, including appropriate formula substitutions, diagrams, graphs, charts, etc. And utilize the information provided for each question to determine your answer. And note that diagrams are not necessarily drawn to scale. For all questions in this part, a correct numerical answer with no work receives only one credit. All answers should be written in pen except for your graphs drawings, which should be done in pencil. So given this function, t of x, in the form of a table, and if we look at the x column, we do not see any x values repeating, so therefore we know it's a function but it also states that. Determine whether t of x is linear or exponential. Well, since we move from one x value to the next by adding two, and we also move from each y value by subtracting two and a half, that is a constant rate of change. You can see the slope calculation or rate of change here. Okay, change y over change of x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Because of the constant rate of change, it's linear. You can also take and graph it, okay? I'm going to make sure we label our x and y axes. You can, when you plot the points, you see we connect with a straight line. And then um, lastly, you can also go to your calculator Enter the information into the table, and then calculate a linear regression as well as an exponential. When you calculate the linear regression, you can see that our R value is negative 1. So that means it is a straight line. Number 26. Marcel claims that the graph below represents a function because when we draw a vertical line here, the vertical line crosses the graph in two spots at the point 2, 3 and 2, negative 1. It is not a function. So you can state, um, first you want to answer, is he correct? You can say no, he is not correct. Or state that he's not correct because it does not pass the vertical line test. Or you can say Marcel is, is not correct because there are repeats in the domain. Okay, we can't have any x values repeating. Number 27, solve the equation for y. When solving the equation, the first thing you want to do is square this binomial. So expand, write out twice, do your full distribution, and then we can focus on, once we remove those parentheses, solving this equation. And because of the quadratic to degree 2, we want it set equal to 0. So moving the 4y over by subtracting and adding the 12, we end up with the trinomial y squared minus 10y plus 21. Now you can solve this also by quadratic formula and completing the square, but factoring is the shortest method as we have numbers that do multiply to a positive 21 and add to negative 10. That would be negative 7 and 3. Draw the line, set each factor to 0, and we end up with the roots of 7 and 3. You can also graph it if you want, or use the graphing calculator. Uh, in this table, y1 was the quadratic, and the y2 was the linear function, and you can see at these two points is when they're equal. So at 3, 0, and 7, 16, and the value for x in this column here is 3 and 7. Um, so therefore, since it was in terms of y and not x, though, that's why here y equals 3 or y equals 7. And then when you take a look at it on the graphing calculator by typing in um, it is x squared minus 10x plus 21, even though it's in terms of y in the problem, you will see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it crosses the x-axis here at 3, 
and 7, and it's right side out because it's positive. Okay? 28. The graph below shows the variation in the average temperature of the Earth's surface from 1950 to 2000 according to one source. During which years did the temperature variation change the most per unit of time? Explain how you obtained your answer. So in looking at it from, um, in terms of the greatest rate of change, or the, which the years of temperature changed the most, we're looking for the steepest slope. And the steepest slope is going to be right here, okay, as we have no change, no change. Um, here, we would have a rate of change of, it goes up 0 0.05 over 1, or I'm sorry, over 5 years, rather, each um, moving from one line to the next is a 5-year change. That would give us 0 0.01. And then right here, between 1965 and 1970, that's the same as that slope right here. And all of these have the same slope from each year five year increment, um, which would be an increase of 0.1 over 5, which is 0 0.02. If you actually calculate the slope here, it's a negative 0.15 over 5, which is negative uh, 0.03. And when you're trying to compare which had the greatest rate of change, we ignore the negative as that's only indicating the direction. So 0 0.03 is the greatest. But you can simply just state that it was from 1960 to 65 because the graph has the steepest um, or the greatest slope. 29. The cost of belonging to a gym can be modeled by C of M equals 50M plus 79.50, where C of M is the total cost for months of membership. State the meaning of the slope and y-intercept of this function with respect to the cost associated with the gym membership. So the y-intercept is, again, y equals mx plus b, that's your b value, or 79.50. And that is the initial cost, or the cost to join the gym. And then the slope of $50 is the monthly fee, or the cost per month. 30, a statistics class surveyed some students during one lunch to obtain opinions about television programming preferences. The results of the survey are summarized in the table below. So based on the table, um, if we add straight across, we have 105 males and 90 females. And then we have a total of 118 that preferred comedy and 77 um, that preferred drama for a total of 195. But based on the sample, predict how many of the school's 351 males would prefer comedy. Okay, so let x equal the unknown, which is the number of males who prefer comedy, and we want to know how many, this is what we're looking for, how many out of the total. But based on the table, we know that there were 70 out of the 105 that preferred comedy. So this is what we know based on the information. This is what we're trying to find. So set up a proportion and solve for x by cross multiplying. So x times 105 is 105x. And then 351 times 70 is 24,570. Divide by 105 and we have 234 males. 31, it says given that A is greater than B, solve for X in terms of A and B. So this to start, given that A is greater than B, when you subtract, so B minus A, so you're subtracting the um, larger from the smaller, you're going to end up with a negative number. So that'll come into play later. So first distribute. 
So b times x is bx, b times 3 is 3b. Now we want to add the 3b over. We get 10b. Subtract the ax. We have all the b terms on one side, all the x terms on one side. Because you can't combine bx and ax like you were to combine the 7 plus 3 to get 10, you simply write bx minus ax. To get x, or to solve for x when it's a part of two terms, we factor out the x. It's a GCF, or undo that distribution. So when you do that, pull out a greatest common factor of x, we end up with the quotient b minus a. Dividing by the binomial b minus a, we end up with x, and then we're going to ignore the symbol for a second. And then since we can't divide b minus, or 10b by b minus a, we simply write the expression. We ended up having to change the symbol because this is negative. Because at the top, it said, remember, that a is greater than b. So when you take b minus a, you'll get a negative number. And dividing by a negative switches the symbol. 32. Jacob and Jesse are studying the spread of dandelions. Jacob discovers that the growth over t weeks can be defined by the function f of t equals 8 times 2 to the t, where Jessica finds that the growth function of t weeks is g of t equals 2 raised to the t plus 3. Calculate the number of dandelions that Jacob and Jessica will have after 5 weeks. Well, in the, for both functions, T represented the number of weeks. So we're going to substitute 5 for T into both. We come out with um, 256 plants for Jacob and 256 plants for Jessica. So they have the same amount. Based on the growth from both functions, explain the relationship between F of T and G of T. Okay, F of T and G of T are equivalent. And if you actually type this into your calculator, the two functions, you will notice, so I'll look at the values from 0 to 5, they have the same number of dandelions for week 0. For week 1, they both end up with 16. Week 2, 32. Week 3, 64. Week 4, 128. And week 5, the 256. So they're not only will yield the same dandelions for week 5, but no matter what week, okay, you'll end up with f of t equals g of t. Okay? Thirty-three. Now we're moving into part three. So we have four questions in this part, and each correct answer is going to receive four credits. Again, clearly indicate the necessary steps, uh, formula substitutions, diagrams, charts, etc., and utilize the information for each question to help you answer it. And diagrams are not drawn to scale. For all questions in this part, a correct numerical answer with no work shown, again, is only one point. So you get one out of the four. All answers should be written in pen, except for your graphs, drawings, which should be done in pencil. So in 33, we have our function, which represents the height of an object. So looking at quadrant one with our height um, and time. Determine the number of seconds it takes to reach its maximum height. So an object here above the ground, it goes up and it's going to come down because of that negative x squared. So we have that maximum point on the curve. To find that vertex, we use the axis of symmetry formula, which is x equals negative b over 2a. And once we find x, if we had to find the maximum height, we would simply plug it in to find y. But since I'm just looking for okay, the number of seconds t, we can just use the axis of symmetry formula. You could also, so or, take a look at your table of values. So we can see the vertex right here, so we can see the symmetry. 
and looking at the x value or t value, we can see it is 2. State the time interval in seconds during which the height of the object decreases. So looking at the curve, the decreasing part of this function would be here to here. So we know this was at 2, and then it actually hits based on the table at 5. So it's between 2 and 5, not including 2 and 5, because that's when it reached is its maximum height at 2, and then right here at 0. So between 2 and 5 is when the object decreases. So between is written here as an interval 2 less than t less than 5. Explain your reasoning. The height decreases after reaching its maximum height at 2 seconds until it hits the ground at 0 seconds. So here to here. From here it's going down. 34. Fred's teacher gave the class a quadratic function. State two different methods he could use to solve the equation. So Fred could solve that by completing the square or the quadratic formula. So there are the two different methods. So using one method, state in, uh, state in part A, solve. So this is solving by the quadratic formula. You should always write it down first and then show your substitution and work step by step. To state okay, your answers to the nearest tenth, meaning you need to round one answer. Again, remember, it's x equals negative b plus or minus square root. So this plus or minus gives you your two solutions. So one root is going to be with the plus. The other is with the minus. So rounding to the nearest tenth, that's your first decimal place, first place to the right. So because of the 7, that's going to get bumped up. So negative 0.7. And because of the 2, this stays the same. 35. So Erica, the manager of Stellar Beans, collected data on the daily high temperature and revenue from coffee sales. Data from the nine days this past fall are shown in the table below. State the linear regression function. So we want to enter this information into the calculator. And then just as I was showing you for the example earlier, you calculate, go to stat, calculate the linear regressions. It's always good to copy down the A value and B value from the calculator because when you round, if you round incorrectly, we could potentially get you some points. So write the function f of t. So down below, f of t equals, okay, because of the 2, the 8 stays the same. Because of the 1, the 2 stays the same. So on the calculator, it's ax plus b. So a, negative 58, t plus 6,182. Okay, you must have it in terms of t. State the correlation coefficient. So here is the number from the calculator. We're rounding to the nearest hundredth. So that's two places to the right. And because of the four, that's going to stay the same. So it's about or approximately negative 0.94. And this demonstrates there is a strong linear relationship we should say, um, does it indicate a strong linear relationship? Yes, there is a strong linear relationship because R is close to negative 1. 36. A contractor has 48 meters of fencing that it's going to use as the perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around, so if you're walking from here to here, so we add up all the sides. We add up all the sides and you get 48. The length of one side of the garden is represented by x, so you can mark that. Now, to determine the width, as I stated, you knew that the perimeter was equal to x plus x, and then you could say plus the two widths. So 48 equals 2x plus 2w. To solve for w, you subtract the 2x 
48 minus 2x equals 2w, divide by 2, because those are equal, and there's the length. Okay? So divide 48 by 2, you get 24. Negative 2x divided by 2 is negative x. Now, in using the dimensions, area is length times width. So the area is stated to be 108 square meters. So length times width is equal to 108. Distribute the x through. Because it's degree 2, we want it set equal to 0. The factors of 108 that combine to a negative 24, a negative 6, and negative 18. Draw the line setting each factor equal to 0. We have 6 and 18. Now, no matter, again, the dimensions were 24 minus x and x. So no matter if you put in, so do 24 minus 6 and 6, 24 minus 6 is 18. And then if you plug in on this side, say the 18, 24 minus 18 is 6, and then 18 is your other dimension. So in plugging them both in, you end up with the dimensions of 6 meters and 18 meters. Make sure you include your unit of measurement. Last part, part four. Um, there's only one question in this part, which is six credits. Again, using the necessary steps, formula substitutions, diagrams, charts, and the information um, to answer each question. Note that the diagrams are not drawn to scale. And as in every other uh, short answer section, a correct numerical answer with no work is only one point. All work is done in pen. And... Um, any graphs, drawings can be done in pencil. The Real Good Cinema is conducting a mathematical study in its theater. There are 200 seats, so that's important. Good information to highlight. And we have adult tickets, 1250, children, 625. And their goal is to sell at least 1500. Write a system of linear inequalities, so no equal signs but greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or just simply greater than or less than. That can be used to find the possible combination of adult tickets X, children's tickets Y. Well, based on the first statement that I boxed, 200 seats. So we know that the number of children's tickets um, and adults tickets, so children X, adults Y, we can only sell at most 200 seats, or we can fill less than that. So in solving the inequality by subtracting x, we end up with y is less than or equal to negative x plus 200. Over here, um, because the cinema has a goal to sell at least 1,500, at least means 1,500 or more. Okay, so here's the equation for that. 1,250 for an adult ticket X, 625 for a child's ticket Y, we want to make $1,500 or more. So solving that, we got Y is greater than or equal to negative 2X plus 240. So writing a system of linear equalities would be this inequality here and this inequality here. Because on the back we're going to have to graph it, that's why we want to solve it for y so you can see your slope and your intercept. And remember for both, because of that equal to line, they're going to be solid. So let's actually graph first. So let's zoom out so you can see the whole thing. I think 50 is what we'll have to do. So the one inequality, um, x plus y is less than or equal to 100, or y is less than or equal to negative x plus 200. That's this one here. It's solid because of the equal to, and it's shaded below. 
the other inequality, which was y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 240. So starting up here, the slope of negative 2 and greater than is shading this way. You have to label your three sections. So the capital S is the solution set, so we're the overlapping. And then you label the other two sections with the original inequalities. Back on the other side, it says, um, let's bring that back larger. Marta claims it's selling 30 adult tickets and 80 children's tickets, which the point would be 30, 80. Will result in meeting the cinema's goal. Explain whether she is correct or incorrect. So if we go back to the graph, 30, 80. So 30, 80 right here is not in our solution set. So therefore, she's incorrect because it does not lie in the solution set.